So today I'm going to do a review of the Ocean Kayak Big Game Prowler 2. I bought this kayak a couple of months ago and I've been nothing but impressed with it. It has a heavy weight capacity, uh, it holds a lot of gear, and I'm going to show you guys how I've rigged mine out. I'm also going to talk about some of the things I like about the kayak as well as some of the things I don't like. And I'll be honest with you, there's not a lot of things that I don't like about this kayak. So when I go freshwater fishing, I don't keep my catch. I typically catch and release. Most of what I catch is, what, most of what I fish for is largemouth bass and I release those so they can get bigger, catch them again. Now saltwater fishing is a whole different story. So I'm gonna show you some of the gear I use for both scenarios. And I'm gonna take you around the kayak and show you the things that I like and the things that I don't like about the kayak. And again, not many things I don't like about the kayak, but I'm gonna show you after several months of experience and years of experience in my past with different kayaks, uh, what works for me, what doesn't work for me, and hopefully it gives you some insight. And if you're debating making a purchase with this kayak, I wouldn't give it too much thought. It's uh, well worth the investment, and Ocean Kayak um, Prowlers hold their value pretty well. I've learned that from my past experience. So up front on the Ocean Kayak, you've got a, uh, this is a drain plug right here. You've got a nice handle. Um, this is all factory rigging. I didn't do anything to it. And you've got your uh, click seal hatch. So this click seal hatch, very nice um, locking mechanism on it. Unlock, pop it open, and that gives you access to the interior of your kayak. It has proven to be waterproof for me, and I've fished in rain and I've gotten wet several times and have not had a problem with it. All right, so the Ocean Kayak comes with these black plates and there's three of them on each side of the kayak and you can put ram mounts, scotty mounts, whatever you want. Obviously, I'm a fan of the scotty mount and I probably scotty mounted this thing to death, but I will show you uh, that each one of these that I've mounted uh, definitely has a use. The one thing that I wanna point out to you is you can see under there that it's just nuts and bolts and I couldn't use, although I ordered, I couldn't use the Scotty Mount backing plates. So one of the issues that I have found with this kayak is the these black plates are too close to the kayak to allow the the, the width, the extra width from the from the nuts right here, um, to use the backing plates. So just a heads up to everybody, um, if you want to use the backing plates, um, you're going to need to use those in areas like this where you can get underneath the kayak or have access to the inside and have plenty of room for the backing plates. The Mod Pod, as they call it, um, I don't know, mixed feelings about this Mod Pod. I like it. It's handy. Um, I've got my pliers mounted here. I've got a Scotty cup holder right here that uh, there's several Scotty mount locations. I keep my pliers right here, my Scotty mount drink holder there. I have my pliers clipped to my Scotty drink holder. And then the this piece right here is actually a stand-up cord, which I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to be honest, I don't stand up in my kayak. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm about 6'2", about 240 pounds, and I don't see myself standing up in it. So I don't use that for to stand up with, although it could be a, a good, good way to get leverage to stand up. But I mounted a uh, buck tool and have it tethered in um, using that. So personally, I would rather have uh, this space, as you see with some of the Hobie kayaks, I would rather have this space flat, access to the, to the deck below the kayak, but I would rather have this flat. I find that I could put a small cooler there, or I could put a small bait bucket there, something, um, but with this elevated like it is, I find that uh, you're limited with what you can put in them. The Mod Pod is a is a good bit of storage, and I don't know if you can see it well, but that is the battery case for my 12-volt uh, battery for my fish finder. And from the factory, it comes mounted more like about in this area here. And I actually moved it down using the existing mounting brackets. And then I also put it on the mounting bracket that goes there. Um, and I moved it closer to me because what I found is during transport sometimes the wires get disconnected or pulled off and I didn't have any access to the battery. I have a 
Pelican 1060 case, and you can see my wallet and my keys are in there. Um, that's going to keep that dry. Um, and this dry bag, and again, there's a rope right here that keeps the Mod Pod lid onto the uh, attached to the kayak. I secure things to it. Inside this bag is a uh, basic first aid kit. Here, and I mounted this eye right here. I have the sorry, I know that's noisy. But I have the Rapala uh, plastic uh, lippers. Um, this is a piece of bungee, so it's pretty flexible. And I keep that up under my seat. Another dry bag. Now this dry bag uh, is a little bit closer to me, so this is what I use for my cell phone. And I also keep my GoPro batteries in there as well. So one of the best features of this kayak is most definitely the seat. I've used, uh, I've had kayaks before where they have these, the you know, like the half half inch, three quarter inch foam pad where you're sitting and your butt is on the deck of the kayak and you get wet all day long. But this seat is really what makes this kayak and it's a aluminum frame seat and it's got two positions. I'm going to tell you that Again, I'm 6'2", 240 pounds. I do not go into the high position. Um, it, to me, it's too tippy at that point, and I'm just not comfortable. Other people would be fine with it, but this seat is worth its weight in gold. So I can sit in this kayak and fish four to six hours with no problem whatsoever without getting up a single time because of the comfort of the seat. The seat is adjustable, um, has a lot of different adjustments, and it's one of the... Uh, it's definitely one of the selling points of the kayak for me. So under the seat there's storage as well and in the low position the storage is pretty minimal but I have my and there's a stainless steel bar that comes from the factory and I have my my leash uh, my, my paddle leash tethered to that and I also carry this uh, military grade SOG um, knife and I keep that with me at all times. The sheath is tethered to this and then I have the actual knife tethered to the kayak handle. So one essential item that you need to have in your kayak at all times is a life jacket. Now it's recommended to wear this anytime you're out on the water. Um, I typically do not wear this when I'm in fresh water. I will wear it when I'm in salt water, especially if I'm offshore uh, fishing. I will just put it on. It's got a lot of pockets, a lot of cool places to put stuff. Um, and it's designed to be a kayak. It's a kayak life jacket so it has a small back portion so that it doesn't interfere with the seat and it's comfortable to wear all day long um, uh, orange um, a lot of guys buy them in the uh, green color like the hunter green color um, but i want it to be more visible on the water and the orange i think gives you an advantage with that uh, with being visible and being seen by boaters was the main concern there on the back tank well area of the kayak i have uh, these plano tackle boxes I have one for fresh water, I have different versions for fresh water, and I have different versions for salt water. Obviously salt water, I'm, I'm, typically I carry a little more gear with me, so one may not do it, but I keep the basics and the, and the necessities in here. Different hooks, leader, um, wire line, whatever I might need. So the back tank well area of the ocean kayak, it's okay. It's, it's average size, I would say. I have the, the black plates. And I have, I have mounted stainless steel eyes to these, which come in, uh, they're just invaluable to mount stuff to. I also added a, actually that's a factory um, eye. And then again, I have the rod holders that have the uh, eyes built into them. Now obviously on this one I have my anchor. And if you fold the seat back, um, I have my anchor line um, in this. I have it on a piece of plastic that keeps it from getting tangled. Um, so if I know I'm going to use my anchor, I'll go ahead and unwind that before I go out. But that's where I keep my anchor and keep the anchor um, float in case I have to disconnect because uh, of a big fish hookup. So, so obviously I film my fishing adventures with my GoPros. I have two GoPros that I mount on my kayak and I use a Scotty mount as well as the Scotty uh, GoPro mount. And it is connected to the kayak. Um, via this the Scotty arm the extension arm and I've added a few extension pieces in there and That allows me to get it out further away from me and it gives me a good view of the water something about like that on the rear mount now This is also tethered in So there's two types of Scotty mounts that you can buy and let me show you this really quick 
there's the um, mount where you have to lift this up, twist it, and find the alignment of the notch and the groove and pull that out. Now that's going to, sometimes you have to twist it around a couple of times uh, with the rod and reel in it. It's inconvenient. Um, with the GoPro, it's also inconvenient. So they also make these Scotty mounts that have the button that you push that instantly releases the uh, arm. Now I have this tethered in, um, and very easy to do. I bought these tethers. These are on uh, Amazon. Um, I think they're about 10 bucks, and you get three of them. And they're I, I really like them. They're pretty awesome. And I put this, I undid these two screws on this black mounting plate, slid this under here, and then I drilled a hole uh, through my Scotty mount, this part here, this thick part here, and put it, fished it through there and, and looped it through. So if I take this out and just push the button, it gives me full range of being able to get to my GoPro, change my batteries, and if I do drop it in the water, it is tethered to the side of the kayak. So the front GoPro mount, very similar, um, set up with the same system, and I put the uh, button to release the, the arm on the inside of the kayak where it's a little easier for me to reach. Same tether system, same, same setup there, and same Scotty mount. So I also wanted to show you the, uh, the, the fish finder that I have. It's a Raymarine Dragonfly 4, and it has got a nice uh, big display. And I want to show you a little bit about how I have it rigged up. So, obviously, Scotty mount, Scotty, uh, Scotty fish finder mount, and then I have the wires coming up through a hole that I drilled right there. Now, that little black plastic cap, um, those are available at West Marine, and they're not easy to find in West Marine, but they have them in the store. And I ended up buying two of them. They come with a rubber gasket. It's not entirely waterproof, but it's been fine for my needs. So you have to, with a, with a fish finder, you're going to go in um, from here to get these wires in. You're going to go into the kayak, and then you're going to have to come out at some point for the transducer. Now, the Dragonfly 4 has a transducer, and this is the Scotty transducer mount. And the Dragonfly 4 has a, it, it, the transducer is huge. Showed, showed this earlier. There's my battery with the connections hooked up. So I took this out a couple times before I actually picked a location to mount the, the Dragonfly, the, the fish finder. And it seems like it's far away, but uh, it's, it's the perfect distance away. And it's what I like about where I chose to mount it is it's out of the way. And one of the things about a fish finder is it needs to be handy, it needs to be useful information, um, but it can't get in the way. Now I see a lot of guys mount them on the Mod Pod there. Um, you don't need it to be that close. It's got a very bright display, um, but but I would recommend that you find the place and the location that works for you because everybody's going to be different on this one. So as far as the paddle goes, I ended up buying the Bending Branches Angler Classic. It's not a cheap paddle. Uh, it's about 150 bucks, um, which is more than I wanted to spend, but it has proven to be a really good paddle. I have the 250 centimeter paddle, and the stock location on the Ocean Kayak are those two screws right there. Now what I found when I put the paddle clip, which is right there, when I put that here, the front of my paddle interfered with my Scotty mounts and it hit and it kept knocking it out of place. So what I did is simply moved it back here and you can see this piece of bungee here. So I mounted it there. You can see I used two pop rivets there and a clip to hold it. You put it in, clip it on there, and it doesn't even touch. There you go. That's a better view of it. It doesn't even touch um, the front part of the kayak. So that worked out better for me. And again, being right-handed, I mounted this on the right-hand side of the kayak. Right, so coming down from the nose of the kayak, uh, I've got my I've installed an anchor trolley. Uh, it's probably one of the best things I've ever put on my kayak. My anchor trolley system allows me to reposition my kayak based on the wind conditions and what's going on. Now on the anchor trolley system, this is the back of the kayak. I did put a eye, a nylon eye, and I use pop rivets here. And there's one about three quarters of the way up front. So when you unhook the anchor trolley from the cleat, 
frees up the rope and here you have your triangle assembly that you hook your anchor to and this is a night eyes product uh, there's two versions of this they actually sell this at home depot one is all aluminum so obviously i bought the all aluminum because i'm a saltwater i fish in saltwater as well and this allows you to how it's slack like that this allows you it's not going to allow me with the cleat undone but if i hook up the cleat just a little bit it allows me to play with the tension in my anchor trolley system fairly easily but i did want to show you now i've made it too tight so let me release this a little bit and it allows you to move this now again Again, I'm right-handed, so all this is on my right hand, my right side, and it allows me to make these adjustments fairly easily with the hand that I'm uh, good with. 